Morning and welcome to another video. It seems, in spite of all the videos I made trying to document the process of transient analysis, the students are still having difficulty and they said, Sir, we still don't understand it. So we're trying again from a different angle. What you see there on the screen is the voltage and current relationships in resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Those are called IV relationships. They relate the voltage to the current. So on the top, we have the voltages, and on the bottom, we have the currents. And you can easily see for yourself that if we want the current through the coil, we will simply substitute that equation to find the current. Now that immediately is recorded in this manner because with KVL, we want voltages to sum up. And with KCL, we want currents to sum up. So if we're using KCL, we're going to use the bottom set of equations. And if we use KVL, we are going to use the top set of equations when constructing equations for the particular circuits we're trying to solve. When T is equal to zero, a switch is usually thrown to alter the circuit in some way. Because without that, the circuit is going to reach a static condition when the capacitor is either charged or discharged to whatever voltage the network presents. So we use the designation minus zero, T equals zero minus, or plus zero, T equals zero plus, to indicate the, the conditions that are in the circuit just before the switch is thrown and just after the switch is thrown. But when using these in your mathematical model, you need to remember that T is zero for both T minus, T zero minus and T zero plus. So the zero will become important if you plug it in to your time equations, the differentials and integrations shown there depend on time. So we plug in at zero for time when doing our calculations. Now, the initial and final conditions do not depend upon T. That's the beauty of it. They are steady states. The circuit reaches a steady state. Then we throw, throw the switch. It becomes into an unstable state. Uh, currents change, voltages change, and eventually they settle down to another steady state. This is because we're dealing with DC current. And when we talk about DC transient analysis, we mean the shifting or time varying changes that occur between these two steady states. One steady state exists at T equals zero, and the other steady state exists after a very long time when the circuit settles back down to a unchanging state. That's the meaning of steady state, unchanging. So we're now going to consider a circuit where you can see that the switch opens and closes a short across the 2 ohm resistor. The arrow indicates that at T equals zero, we open the switch. So when we write T equals zero with an arrow like that, it means that at T equals zero, the switch is closed, and at T equals zero plus, the switch is open. So the T equals zero minus 
is going to be the condition that exists just before we open the switch. Now, if the 2 ohm resistor is shorted out, then the 6 and 3 ohm resistors are in parallel. That should become obvious. And the capacitor is going to be charged to whatever voltage is across that parallel combination because we have allowed the circuit to reach steady state before opening that switch. So that means that the current into the capacitor is zero and all we have to do is work out the voltage across the parallel combination of six ohms and three ohms. When we do that, we find that V is 12 volts. Now it's easy to see that because we take the parallel combination and multiply it by 6 V equals IR and we find that we have a current of 0 and a V of 12 volts at T equals 0 minus. Now, T equals zero plus is the condition that pertains right after the switch is opened, but before the capacitor has had a chance to change its charge. When we open the switch, we know that the capacitor voltage will drop. Why do we know this? Because we have introduced a resistance between the 6 amp source and the actual capacitor, or if you look at it, we have created, by opening the switch, a voltage divider between that consists of the 2 and 3 ohm resistor. So in order to discover what the new voltage and current will be, we need to calculate the current through the 2 ohm resistor when the switch is opened. And we do this by finding out what is the voltage V1 in orange. We already know we already know that V is 12 volts because we just worked that out and it's not had a chance to change. So if you like, you could replace that capacitor to the right with a 12 volt source and the problem simply becomes a trivial uh, salt solution with two sources. We write a KCL equation for the node labeled V1. Each of those three terms represents a branch at V1. The minus 6 is the 6 amp source itself. The V1 over 6 is the current through the 6 ohm resistor. And the V1 minus V, which we know to be 12 volts, divided by 2, is the current through the 2 ohm resistor. When we solve for V1, we discover that the voltage at V1 is actually 18 volts. When we realize that the voltage at V1 is 18 volts and V is 12 volts, it has to be a 6 voltage, 6 voltage volts drop across the 2 ohm resistor. If we have a 6 volt drop across the 2 ohm resistor, that means that 3 amps 
is flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. And if 3 amps is flowing through the 2 ohm resistor, then 3 amps will need to flow through the 6 ohm resistor in order to produce the 18 volts that we just discovered. In order to have 12 volts across a 3 ohm resistor requires that 4 amps are flowing through it. Now, if we have 3 amps coming from the 2 ohm resistor leg and we have 4 amps coming down through the 3 ohm resistor in order to produce the 12 volts, then clearly the 1 amp is going to have to come from the capacitor. Now, because we have changed the direction of the arrow and the capacitor current is now coming into the node, we have moved from a charging to a discharging state, the amp is going to be negative. So the conditions that exist at T equals zero plus are minus one amp, I is minus one amp, and V is 12 volts. Now it just remains for us to find the final condition of the circuit after the capacitor has discharged sufficiently. Once the capacitor discharges to whatever voltage is across the voltage divider of the 2 and 3 ohm resistor, its current will drop to zero. And this is the key to the success of finding the final V in the problem. Once the current into the node has dropped to zero, the voltage across the voltage divider is obtained by that equation and it works out to 9.82 volts. Now we get the 9.82 volts by multiplying V equals I R. So the R is the 3 ohm resistor on the left and what is contained in the brackets is the proportional current through it. You see we have the maximal current of 6 amps being multiplied by the current division rule 6 over 6 plus 5, the 5 being the serial combination of 3 and 2. Study the diagram carefully so that you agree with me that 9.82 volts is now across the capacitor and you will realize that the capacitor has moved from 12 volts with no current, fully charged or charged up to what the circuit will allow. Opening the switch has allowed the capacitor to discharge to 9.82 volts. Let us find out, let us find out what is really important in this exercise. What is really important in this exercise is that the initial and final states do not depend upon C or L or time. We have not had to use any calculus in working out the initial and final states. And we don't even care what value capacitor is there. No matter what the value of C is, the results will be the same. They depend upon the network, the source, and the resistors, and not on the value of the capacitor or the coil. Thanks for watching, and we will continue in the next video.